let every man that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Right? That we, we need to, to take heed to ourselves and take heed where you're at spiritually, especially as you start to grow and you are making, getting victories over sin. You know, no matter how long it's been, no matter, you know, how good you're doing, don't let yourself get too full of yourself of thinking that you're immune from sin and letting your guard down to sin and allowing yourselves to do things that maybe in the past you'd made these rules because you want to make sure that you don't get involved in certain sins. And then you just start thinking like, well, it's been a long time. I'm past that. And you start opening up, letting down your guard, changing the rules that you'd set up for yourself. And before you know it, people slip and fall and get involved in sin. And then you have to deal with the consequences of that sin. And we're going to read some of that here starting in these first three verses. Look at verse number one. The Bible says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Now, this verse has come up, this concept has come up in the past in the Psalms, but we want to make sure when, that, that we understand Yet, you know, the Lord loves all of his children and he chastens every son that he receives. So when, you, when you're born again, and we're going to get into this a little bit later. Actually, yeah, we're going to get into this a little bit later. When you're born again, you're not just, you know, it's, it's not like there's no more punishment for any sin ever because you're still going to be chastised and, and chastened. When you're born again, you become a child of God and God's going to deal with you as a father deals with his son. So when you go astray, when you do things that are bad, when you do things that are wrong, then you got to face the discipline, the chastening of the father. And this is a great way to start off this psalm as we get into this and we start seeing, you know, why he even brings us up is, hey, don't rebuke me in your wrath. Don't, when you're angry, you know, please, I know I need to rebuke, but don't rebuke me in your wrath and don't chasten me in thy hot displeasure when you're just super angry. Why? Because you're going to get it worse. Everybody knows when the parents come across a child doing something just what are you doing? And, and their blood pressure goes up. And if you catch that child right away to give them that disciplining, it's going to be much worse than if some time has gone by and then they get to you because you had a chance to cool down a little bit. And this is basically what David is saying to God, like, hey, don't rebuke me in your wrath, right? Like, I know I need to be corrected. Just show a little mercy here and, and not get uh, too upset with me and chasing me in thy hot displeasure. And then he continues on though, because he says in verse two, for thine arrows stick fast in me. Basically, I'm already receiving of it. You know, those arrows, they're already sticking in me fast. They're, they're sticking in me. And he says, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. So he's already getting it from God. He's already being chastened and punished from God. But then look at this, he says, neither is there any rest of my bones because of my sin. And one of the things that you'll notice throughout this psalm is that there is no, um, you know, downplaying sin. There is no making excuse for his sin. It's completely accepting and saying, you know what, it's because of me. So he's saying, yeah, I'm getting it bad. Yeah, I'm getting chastised. Yeah, I'm getting pressed sore and the arrows are sticking in me. But why is that happening? It's because of my sin of my sin and as much as we teach and preach the freeness of salvation and how great the gift is and how loving and merciful God is and we go out on a regular basis on a weekly basis and go out and explain to people you know no matter what you've done God can forgive you of your sins that that gift is available and you don't have to die and go to hell and that you could go to heaven and all of your sins could be wiped out and forgiven and you're washed in the blood of Christ and you're sealed and you're sanctified. What great news that is, but don't let that deceive you into thinking that you won't be chastised and punished in this life after you're born again when you go off and sin. Yeah. 